Chichi. Chichi. Ni hao. Je vous remercie de m'avoir invité à assister à cet événement pour célébrer 45 ans de relations diplomatiques entre le Canada et la Chine. C'est un véritable honneur d'être ici. Il s'agit d'un événement spécial pour moi. Comme vous le savez peut-être, vous le savez certainement, mon père a contribué grandement à l'établissement et au développement de la relation entre le Canada et la Chine. Mais ce n'était pas juste dans les années 70. C'est lorsqu'il est revenu de ce pays, de sa première visite en 1960. Il est de demeuré fasciné par son peuple et sa, par sa culture, mais surtout, il a reconnu l'importance de s'engager activement auprès de la Chine. It's something that he passed on uh, to his sons as well. My brother is uh, very much a Sinophile working on a, a book on China. Uh, I myself have been uh, a number of times when I was younger with my father and on my own uh, to visit China, and I look forward uh, to opportunities in the coming years in my new responsibilities uh, to visit and engage uh, very positively with China, because that's just something that Canada has always done. We talk about 45 years, but as uh, Stefan highlighted, our history together goes back much longer than that. Uh, and will continue uh, long into the future. Uh, Prime Ministers have always engaged with China, even uh, starting, as Stefan pointed out, with Prime Minister Diefenbaker uh, during uh, the wheat fam the famine. Uh, so uh, it goes beyond party lines. It goes beyond political perceptions. Uh, it has to do with how we engage to build opportunity for Canadians and opportunity uh, for the Chinese. Uh, in how we work together and collaborate. Because today, following 45 years of diplomatic relations, China and Canada have a strong and growing relationship. China plays a vital role in global institutions and a central role in global commerce as one of the world's leading trading nations. We look forward to working closely with China in the years ahead to our mutual benefit and overall development. A key goal for us is to enhance our bilateral economic relations in order to grow Canada's middle class and build long-term prosperity in both countries. But we know governments can't do it alone. We will continue to consult and engage with Canadians on what form this relationship can take. Our government welcomes the opportunity to work closely with Chinese partners to share our experiences, our challenges, and our successes in multiculturalism, human rights, religious freedoms, health care, and environmental protection. And can I say that the uh, Paris Conference uh, on the Environment of last year wouldn't have been nearly the success it was if it hadn't been for China. Uh, taking a strong role in understanding that action on the environment is essential to all of us. And I thank the Chinese uh, people for that leadership. <laughs> Our people-to-people -people ties have never been stronger. Canada's Chinese community is thriving. We are seeing growing numbers of Chinese tourists in every corner of the country. There are increasing numbers of flights connecting our largest cities, and there are impressive numbers of Chinese students on our college and university campuses. But as Stefan also pointed out, there's always room for more. <laughs> we know that these connections bring higher levels of mutual understanding and strengthen our overall relations. Increased understanding was an important goal of the establishment of China-Canada diplomatic relations 45 years ago. While we, of course, have still much to learn from each other, I also know that our current relationship can and will translate into real economic growth and further mutual benefit in the years that lie ahead. Merci encore de m'avoir accueilli aujourd'hui. C'est un immense plaisir de célébrer avec vous cette étape si importante dans une amitié qui va durer longtemps encore. Merci beaucoup.